Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of South Asia TV. Tonight we have a, a discussion on something that so far, you know, for the last two years I have not been able to touch, which is more on industrial relations. Uh, a country since the, the peace process, we are slowly emerging to be a country that produces uh, garment, uh, then later on shoes for export. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of Cambodian uh, workers working in the factory level. And you see over the year many disputes arising, riots, some are so as dramatic as also some factory burning. But there are also a lot of uh, things, the uh, dispute that are happening every day that we do not know. So uh, we will be discussing today a bit about what is the mechanism to help uh, solve this industrial relation. And I have the pleasure uh, to have uh, with me tonight uh, Mr. Sokla, who is the, anyway, I'm not going to introduce him. I will ask him to say a bit about himself. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, Lao, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for having me. Uh, please call yes. me Zapana. In this, yes. we, we are on a first name basis. Yes. Uh, uh, so, now, before we start, mm -hmm. could you uh, give a, a bit of your professional background, your, where you educated, and where do you work, and how do you end up working for the council, for example? Uh, thank you. Uh, I was uh, educated uh, here, actually, uh, at the Royal University of uh, Law and Economics. And uh, then uh, I went for a graduate program in uh, South Korea at the okay. university there for two years. And then uh, I came back in 2005 okay. and uh, immediately joined the Arbitration Council uh, okay. at that time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the Arbitration mm -hmm. Council, when was it started? Uh, in 2003, uh, okay. with okay. the support of the Ministry of Labor. Yes, yes. And uh, its main mission is to uh, resolve collective labor disputes yes, yes. Uh, for uh, enterprises and workers in the country. Yeah, I, I think at that time I was still with the Ministry of Commerce. So I was part of that uh, whole uh, process also. So mm -hmm. glad to see that you are now uh, heading the, the council. Uh, how big is uh, the council now? How many arbitrators you have? Uh, we have uh, a total of 30 arbitrators 30. from uh, three lists. Okay. That means it each list of arbitrators, uh, we have uh, 10 arbitrators. Okay. And uh, uh, to support these 30 arbitrators, we also have a, a group of staff, about uh, 20 of them, okay. uh, providing all the legal support and uh, case support work. OK. And uh, mm. most of the time, uh, the mm. dispute is all related to mm. collective dispute, right? Uh, that, that's right. Uh, this council. Uh, when it was set up in 2003, um, we look at the uh, labor law of Cambodia of yes. 1997. Yes. And its main function under the labor law is uh, for this council to resolve collective labor disputes. Mm. Um, when it comes to individual disputes, uh, it has a separate mechanism uh, okay. stated in the law. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, uh, you have handled since 2003 mm -hmm. Approximately how many cases you, the, the council have handled? Um, we consider uh, in total uh, up to now about 1,500 cases. 1,500 cases? Uh, that's, that's right. And uh, uh, most of them, uh, I would say about 90%, uh, come from the garment and footwear uh, factories. Yes. And uh, out of this uh, total caseload, we also do the tracking and uh, to try to uh, evaluate uh, the effectiveness of uh, the council's work. Okay. And uh, out of that, uh, about 75% mm. uh, we consider as a successful uh, resolution, which means um, factories can still uh, continue to focus on their production, mm -hmm. worker can still uh, concentrate on uh, their income generation. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is the best case scenario, and yes. um, uh, the rest, 25%, this is uh, where we're still working to, mm. to try to you know, increase the effectiveness. E effectiveness. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, uh, mm -hmm. if I can use a bi very big word, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the people who are in dispute mm -hmm. with the factory, uh, they felt that there was some justice in, in the rendering of this uh, award. Um, 75% so. anyway, yes. 75% yes. felt that the council have given a fair, neutral, you know, award that they can live with, both sides. Uh, that, that's right. Um, we look uh, at uh, 
two things uh, when we call uh, uh, success uh, through resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, one is uh, the situations where this council mm -hmm. uh, facilitated a negotiation between the parties yes. and uh, allowed them to reach a settlement agreement. Okay. Uh, we call that mediation yes. at the council. And then the other part is uh, the situation where the council issue arbitral mm -hmm. rulings yes. and uh, these rulings are complied with by uh, parties okay. to the dispute. Okay. Yeah. Now, not mm. many people understand mm. the, this uh, mechanism. Perhaps mm. you can walk through a bit. Say there's a, mm. a dispute in a factory. What, what mm. is next uh, before we get to the final thing, very briefly? Uh, if we look at uh, the system for the resolution of collective labor dispute, yes. uh, first, uh, they negotiate at the factory level. Yes. If the negotiation uh, fail, then yes. the dispute can be forwarded to the Ministry of Labor. A uh, anyone, right? A any side, anyone. inside. Yes, that, that's, that's right. Uh, although in reality, it is uh, the trade union that okay. uh, forward uh, such disputes. The case, yeah. And uh, the Ministry of Labor is responsible for conciliating okay. uh, the dispute. Yes. And if uh, it's still not resolved, Yes. The dispute can be forwarded by the Minister of Labor yes. to the Arbitration Council yes. uh, for further resolution. Yes. So these are the kind of the general step mm. uh, for the resolution of collective labor dispute in Cambodia. Yeah. And then the council take over. That that's right. What's yeah. next? Uh, in in this, uh, what happened at the council is that uh, we uh, register cases and then mm. uh, we uh, noticed. Uh, uh, issue notice to the party to okay. come to resolve the dispute at the council. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we also hold hearings. Mm. Uh, this is the opportunities where uh, both parties uh, can uh, present their cases, who is right, who is wrong, mm -hmm. uh, before the council. Yes. And uh, they are also uh, allowed to uh, select the type of uh, arbitration ruling yes. that uh, uh, whether they, uh, they want it to be advisory or they want to be bound yes. uh, by the ruling. Yes. Um, so this is uh, the kind of general step. Yes. But uh, I just want to take the opportunity to, to note that uh, there was a kind of a, a major uh, development in the garment ah, uh, okay. Okay. and footwear industry yes, back yes, in yes. Uh, 2010. Mm, uh, okay. So our system is generally uh, ad advisory arbitration. Okay. Yes. But then um, for the garment and footwear industry, in 2010, they mm. agreed to this so-called uh, landmark memorandum of understanding that uh, uh, provide for binding arbitration at the Arbitration Council yes. uh, concerning matters of rights violation. This is quite a major yeah. evolution of uh, the centre then. Yes, uh, we consider that as a kind of a, a vote of confidence, confidence yes, yes. Uh, for, for the system. That yes. means uh, after a few years of, uh, of work, then uh, the parties, uh, both enterprises mm. and trade unions and workers, consider mm. that the system uh, mm. provide acceptable services. That, uh, that's yes. why they yes. offer such confidence. So 2010, now 2013, early 2013, mm. since, uh, since the, the, the binding aspect mm. of it, uh, how, how many cases have uh, the council handled since, uh, uh, since the uh, landmark, you know? Um, I, I would say around 200 cases uh, per year. Wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, if we look back uh, in, in the past, uh, we um, resolve around uh, 100 cases. But yes. after that, uh, there is a kind of uh, increase uh, in the demand for a resolution yes. of labor disputes. Yes. And, uh, out of this, uh, I would say that uh, a majority uh, of them are, uh, are cases or disputes that are under the framework of yes. this government industry memorandum okay. of okay. understanding. Uh, are there any, mm. Uh, mm. any possibility that other industry mm. that are not in the government, that, mm. that, that are not garment mm. and footwear, would benefit from uh, the service of the council? Um, I think if we look at the data, one thing is that uh, the uh, non-garment, non-footwear uh, yes. uh, cases uh, still remain about 10% okay. of... So there uh, are non-garment yes. cases. That's right. Uh, we have uh, cases from hotel and hospitality sectors, okay. construction sector, mm. uh, as well as uh, other sectors, uh, yes. even from non-governmental yes, organization yes. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Interesting. sector as well. And uh, also uh, some disputes involving um, uh, state as a party yes. and uh, 
Interesting. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Employees as uh, employees. Um, yes. Uh, contracted by yeah. uh, the state. Yeah. So, so there are scope for enlargement of uh, the, the, the council to help tackle other yeah. sectors. Because the reason I say this is because uh, the council came about as a result of uh, uh, an industry that was predominant in those yeah. days. Right? Now as we're moving toward ASEAN economic integration, uh, you know, the world have changed. Mm -hmm. The region have changed, mm -hmm. the dynamics of the country uh, development have changed. You see new uh, industrial player moving mm -hmm. into the market. The Japanese are coming, the Chinese are coming, uh, semi uh, mm -hmm. final products being produced, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing sector coming in, even IT is coming in. Yeah. So I see a sort of like uh, a big diversification mm -hmm. of the, the economy yeah. and with that uh, massive investment in different industry uh, having said that will the council be in a mm. position to enlarge its uh, human resource uh, mm. secure new additional resource uh, acquire new skill to to be relevant also to those new industry coming in because I don't mm. see why we have mm. to start anything uh, another institution to service those industry. What do you think on that? Uh, I think uh, we have all the right infrastructure uh, mm -hmm. at the Arbitration Council. Uh, we uh, uh, endeavor to provide services at a kind of a, a standard. Yes. You could call it an yes. international uh, yeah. standard in order mm -hmm. to service the, uh, the users of the services. Um, the right infrastructure that uh, uh, I refer to here is that uh, uh, this institution is considered independent yes. by the uh, user of the services. Mm -hmm. um, it is very speedy yes. in terms of each dispute. Then uh, we normally have uh, like 15 days okay. in order to uh, resolve on dispute. Is uh, that right? Only 15 days? Only 15 wow. days. So uh, that's very efficient. Uh, it, it is efficient and uh, in the situation where the council uh, have to face uh, complex cases, mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, uh, it's about wages and benefits. Yes. It's about uh, discipline and termination of employees. Yeah. Or it's about other uh, working conditions uh, such as uh, occupational uh, safety and health. Yes. Then uh, we would require additional uh, time. But yes. uh, to um, to use or to have additional uh, mm. time uh, is subject to the consent of the parties okay. uh, to uh, to the kind of yes, longer yes. time period. Yes. Uh, so this is uh, something that is attractive and uh, then uh, there is another aspect is that uh, the council is very uh, open mm. and very uh, transparent. Okay. Um, in terms of the decisions, uh, it is uh, published uh, to yes, the... Yes, indeed. Uh, is that the thing yes. there? Yes. So uh, these are the compilations of the, uh, uh, the council. Yes. In uh, both in Khmer and English, huh? It, it's in Khmer and uh, in English. So very, this is also very... And the idea is uh, to make uh, the whole process and decisions uh, transparent. And um, uh, for now, the council, I think, uh, also offer uh, services uh, free of charge. Mm. That is uh, stated in the law. Okay. And uh, uh, with all this uh, right infrastructure, mm. uh, I think the expansions of uh, as the industry expand, yes. uh, it would not uh, be difficult for uh, the council to also uh, expand its services. Uh, but uh, there will be, I think, uh, some difference uh, in terms of uh, mm. the game we are, uh, yes. uh, are going to uh, encounter. Yes, yes. As now, uh, most of our arbitrator are uh, experienced yes. in uh, how or mm. understanding in how the uh, garment and footwear industry work. Yes. As uh, the industry uh, get more diversified, yes. then uh, we also need to uh, um, expand yes. our uh, technical mm. knowledge into, exactly. well, for example, how does the uh, uh, electronic industry yes, work? Indeed. Indeed. Um, are the manufacturing industry mm. work? Yeah. A plantation is yes. a major labor-intensive industry. Yes. So these are all uh, new areas that uh, we need to uh, prepare. Yes. But just in terms of uh, one thing that uh, we are confident is that uh, we are very uh, uh, much uh, experienced mm. in the area of uh, arbitration yes. rules. So, so, yeah. so mandate-wise, mm. you are not restricted only to government, right? Mandate-wise, uh, mandate-wise, we are not. Okay, and uh, 
uh, the, uh, our competence is uh, to resolve uh, any collective mm. labor dispute okay. across any sector in any uh, geographical yes. regions. Yes. Uh, it's just that uh, our situation now, uh, uh, you know, the demand for dispute yes, resolution yes. are driven yes. uh, by the uh, government and footwear. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, mm. you require by law to provide free service, but mm. you know, I mean, mm. let's face it, free service yeah. is not sustainable. I mean, do you have any plan to, to make it more market-driven? Of course, you have achieved independence. You have achieved the respect from from mm. from the industry, from the labor union. Mm. That's a, a fundamental element mm. already of survival, right? And here yeah. I use the word survival because, you know, mm. uh, at some point, you know, there have to be you know some financial way to ensure that you are not at one time try to deliver mm. the service, mm. same time try to divert the attention right. to looking for a resource because arbitrator have to get paid or something. So I any. Any future vision on how? Because l mm. let's face it, when when you have a larger diversification of the economy, there be new players who want to have access to your service. With the existing resource, you cannot uh, service them. Yes, uh, you are touching on the, the the heart of the issue here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, while the uh, services is provided uh, free of charge, it also creates a financial burden mm -hmm. on uh, our mm -hmm. foundation yes. in order to. Uh, raise additional uh, uh, funding yes. to uh, support the whole services. Um, there, there is a very, uh, I think, uh, a large element here that mm. is uh, to ensure that uh, society mm. uh, enjoy the benefit from these services. Yes. As well as uh, the services uh, will make uh, uh, significant contributions yes. to the national economy mm. as well as yes. the uh, welfare of workers mm. and uh, enterprises. Yes. Um, our situation here is that uh, we're still uh, quite uh, reliant on uh, foreign uh, uh, support, yes. uh, which is uh, which which is very very helpful. Um, but uh, it also uh, creates the situations where uh, we are not able to uh, uh, purely concentrate on the, uh, uh, quality improvement. Okay. And um, uh, what we see is that uh, this, uh, these services uh, really benefit the economy. Mm. Uh, why I say so? Uh, if you look at uh, the data just from 2012, okay. and the whole 2012, the council uh, provides services to um, about uh, 255 uh, enterprises involving wow. about uh, 100,000 workers. Wow. And out of those cases, mm. um, there are about uh, uh, 50 cases that involve a strike. Uh, and uh, not uh, not all strikes, uh, uh, you know, are easy to resolve. Yes. yes. Uh, but uh, based on our data, we uh, were able to resolve uh, mm. uh, half of them, about yeah. 25 of them. That's not bad. And uh, how much would a, uh, a factory and uh, the worker lose uh, yes. in the situation of strike? Of strike. Uh, that would depend on the individual case, depending yes. on the the size of the workforce that yes. participate exactly. in a strike. Exactly. and the duration, yes. but uh, roughly by estimate, um, mm. they would uh, incur a loss mm. at around yes, uh, yes. 10,000 to uh, 50,000 or maybe even more uh, day dollars even. per day. day. Um, that means if uh, we are able to resolve just, uh, let's say, a 10 strike or uh, yeah, say 25 yeah. strike, then uh, we are able to save like uh, millions of dollars. Exactly. So, um, speaking yeah. of saving millions of dollars, yeah. Yeah. don't you think that there have to be some mechanism that Mm. Advancing uh, some of the fruit of the saving to mm. to to sustain the the, yes. the, the council. Of course, there's always a mm. uh, balancing test between mm. uh, independence, you know, from from the mm. employer because whoever pay have a certain mm. sense of uh, that they have certain say. Mm. But uh, I, I think your challenge would be mm. how to do you balance between mm. those who provide funding in the future right. uh, uh, versus you know mm. resisting the the influence mm. of those who, who finance. And there have to be also uh, uh, some, uh, you know, sort of like sensitivity to the mm. union also who feel that mm. way. May, we're not the one who pay, right, right. and therefore will the council act in an impartial way. So mm. I, I do not envy your position. All mm. I'm saying is that, you know, you're doing a great service. Mm. Uh, so far, in uh, looking back in the last 10 years, mm. uh, you have helped solve uh, many industrial uh, dispute, leading to the cooling off mm. industrial relation in in the factory. 
if you look back in the last 10 years, what are the lessons learned? What is your challenge? Uh, what have you overcome? And what do you see the future? Uh, I think uh, uh, there are a few lessons for us. And I think that these lessons uh, will also be helpful for other uh, you know, judicial uh, institutions yes. or quasi-judicial mm. institutions uh, like the Arbitration Council. Yes. Uh, one is that uh, uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, we need to be uh, value-driven. Yes. Uh, when we uh, we established the, the council, mm. then uh, there was uh, an uncertainty whether uh, there is a confidence in a kind of a new system yes. that, that is uh, set up. Yes. Uh, then, uh, you know, uh, we have a uh, focus on our independence mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, our effectiveness that. Uh, uh, whether or not uh, you are relevant, then uh, you have to be able to resolve disputes yes. uh, that benefit the enterprises and mm. the workers mm. in the end. Yeah. And uh, this is where we focus on, and this is uh, you know what uh, made uh, the council uh, gain the confidence yes. from uh, from from the users. Uh, we also look at the uh, kind of uh, the uh, kind of uh, 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 social pol uh, economic uh, okay. context uh, yes. at that time. Um, uh, we uh, get a lot of uh, disputes from, or uh, I mean, from the garment and footwear mm -hmm. industry, mm -hmm. and this is the industry that uh, we uh, try to focus on. Yes. Now, uh, that uh, these uh, conditions uh, may change in the next uh, few years, okay. then uh, we also need to expand our technical expertise in order to be able to uh, service uh, any uh, new industries yes. that uh, you know have the potential uh, to to have uh, dispute. Yes. Actually. Uh, not the potential. Actually, some of uh, these new industry or, or already have disputes. Mm. If you, you view, uh, if you look at uh, some news reports yes. in the, the past few days, mm. uh, there are, there's al also a kind of a strike, uh, yeah. you know, occurring in a, an electronic uh, yes. factory yes, uh, yes. inspiring. Mm. So, uh, so these are a new uh, game for us. Yes. And uh, so. These are just, uh, you know, just uh, uh, how to, 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 to uh, service the industry, but just in terms of uh, institutional uh, mm. building mm. Uh, lessons mm. uh, for the Arbitration Council, it was very, very important to uh, make sure that um, at the setup, mm. the, um, uh, the first few cases uh, uh, are treated uh, very uh, cautiously uh, mm. in order to make sure that, uh, you know, at the beginning we have uh, sufficient confidence, mm. that means uh, Nothing, nothing should be allowed to go wrong at that yes. time because yes. anything that goes wrong mm. will uh, critically undermine our credibility. Yes. Yes. So uh, we made sure that uh, everything goes right. Yes. And uh, actually, this is where the uh, uh, we we also resorted to uh, the uh, international uh, experts in yes. order to help us. Uh, okay. Uh, make sure that um, uh, our professionals yes. uh, get uh, sufficient uh, training on exposure to yes. international best practice if that's I can right say. that's right and then a lot of exposure we had these uh, you know kind of uh, lessons yes. learned from yes. uh, mm. countries like uh, the United States like uh, Australia mm. Uh, mm. as well as yeah. uh, other countries in the, the region like the yes. even the Philippines yes. uh, what uh, go right and mm. what go wrong that we should yes. avoid. Yeah. Uh, speaking of lesson learned, uh, mm. you know, last week mm. uh, the, mm. the first ever established yes. commercial, mm. national commercial arbitration center mm. have elected their executive board, uh, mm. they have the arbitrator, so grosso modo there's a creation of a new commercial arbitration body, right? Mm. Uh, they're new, it means that they still have a long way. You have 10 years mm -hmm. ahead of the game. You have uh, hundreds of thousands of witness uh, yeah. workers who have witnessed uh, the fair, mm -hmm. I would say, quasi-adjudication of their industrial dispute. You have earned the respect from the, you know, the industry to the point that, mm -hmm. you know, a few years ago they have recognized that uh, your award is binding. There's a lot of lesson learned from there. Mm. How can you have this sort of cross-pollination? How can you also share the experience? How can you eventually have your uh, labor arbi arbitrator to also, uh, you know, assist, support, share, you know, uh, collaborate with this new center? I think it's important that 
we learn and we, you know, uh, sort of like, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, that's all I'm saying. Yes. Any prospect of that collaboration with the new center? If, um, should they reach out to you? Um, I think uh, we have already uh, done uh, uh, some work together. Good. Um, I think there is uh, tremendous opportunities for uh, cross-cutting, uh, yes. uh, sharing of uh, the experiences yes. and uh, uh, the expertise in the area of uh, dispute resolution, be yes. it uh, mediation or arbitration. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, there, there is some uh, differences when uh, it comes to uh, the kind of uh, the uh, field of expertise. Mm. Yes. Uh, for example, at uh, the Arbitration Council, our focus uh, has been and I think will be uh, on collective labor disputes. Yes. But for the commercial arbitration, uh, the disputes may be uh, more uh, technical, yeah. but uh, we focus on the, um, the disputes just between um, yes. uh, individual and individual or yes. companies and companies yes. yeah. um, in the commercial area. Uh, so this is uh, the difference, but mm. uh, when it comes to the area of commonality, yes. um, I think that... The soft uh, skill side. Yes, the soft skills side. We, we are uh, quite experienced mm. in uh, arbitration rules, arbitration mm. procedures, yes. and uh, uh, have accumulated, uh, I think, uh, mm. this kind of uh, uh, experience on how hearings are conducted, yes, yes. how to offer the um, services that mm. uh, are uh, accepted and respected by mm. uh, uh, parties to dispute. Mm. And I think uh, that uh, this is the opportunity that can be, uh, I think, shared mm. uh, to um, the, uh, you know, uh, newly uh, set up uh, yes. National Arbitration uh, Center. Yes. And uh, uh, that we have done some work together. Mm. And uh, uh, I don't think it will be difficult to, yes. uh, uh, you know, reach out to one another, oh, actually. Good. Good. Um, good. Uh, I think it will be a kind of a game changer for the yes, justice uh, sector for Cambodia. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Well, um, now I think we're coming to the end of the show. I want to give you one minute for your message. What, what do you want the audience to remember from our discussion today? Uh, I think uh, one is that, uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, all these uh, institutions in place. And the whole idea is uh, how to uh, participate, it, uh, participate in the uh, development uh, of the country's uh, society and mm -hmm. economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, although we are uh, rule of law institutions, we see ourselves as the contributor uh, and facilitator of uh, the development mm -hmm. of uh, the country. And uh, uh, for those that uh, would like to uh, learn more about the Arbitration Council, they are uh, uh, welcome to uh, contact me uh, directly. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a, a large pool of uh, experience in uh, that area. And we hope uh, that uh, this uh, will, uh, you know, spread across uh, uh, the whole country uh, uh, for the development of the country. And uh, we hope to share whatever we have uh, with the next generation of uh, Cambodia. Good. Well, Lao, thank you so much uh, for coming mm. and share your so-called 10-year mm. experience of the council. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that uh, there'll be other opportunity where I can invite you to come, maybe on a more specific uh, sort mm. like. Uh, uh, approach and you know how this sort of dispute will resolve because I'm pretty sure that uh, with mm -hmm. over a thousand some case educate mm -hmm. quasi educated you know uh, mm -hmm. fairly you have mm -hmm. uh, earned so much respect from the industry mm -hmm. there are a lot of lessons learned and in a way you mentioned collective uh, dispute resolution but at the end of the day it's all about dispute That's just right. some is a grouping you know other is not but the motivation is behind the same thing, you know. Mm. There's some injustice, there's some wrong uh, doing, and, and there are some requests for rem remedying, remedial action to remedy this wrongdoing, and, and this is where the council have played uh, this, uh, uh, I like to call this fair, you know, uh, impartial rule that have now earned you this sense of respect. Mm. I could not be more happy to hear that, you know, your award is now recognizes binding. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference between a uh, state-mandated binding like the court, right? It's, uh, it's mm -hmm. in the Constitution and everything, right? But there's a big difference when you're moving from a voluntary, you know, uh, mode where mm -hmm. actors do not have mm -hmm. to have confidence in you. And yet, mm -hmm. over time, you have earned the respect mm -hmm. and they have rewarded you with this binding 
so-called a label which don't uh, uh, um, don't underestimate that mm -hmm. take this uh, with a lot of uh, pride on that one thank so, you well, thank you so much yes. thank you for having me yes okay uh, ladies and gentlemen we in a short uh, exchange uh, I remember one thing out of this discussion is that um, a quasi judicial institution like uh, the labor arbitration council has done their job uh, and I just said that uh, from a framework where it is not binding and then after so many years of watching the, the, the evolution you know of the you know the the center of the council if I can say you know the actor itself have decided that it's fair it's impartial we trust this guy we trust the council uh, we've been given, uh, you know, uh, sort of like uh, justice in, in our quest for justice when we have dispute. Uh, we have saved uh, in total millions of dollars of potential, uh, you know, money that could be wasted. A uh, factory could have been burned, people could be dead from the factory, riot stampede, that sort of thing. Um, we should take pride that an institution like the Labor Arbitration Council has achieved that uh, respect which is their award is now recognized as binding and there's a lot of lesson learned for new institution like the new commercial arbitration which I myself was uh, quite uh, proud to look back in the days we negotiated the WTO accession we made the commitment that we want to bring transparency we want to bring a sense of a uh, uh, equal playing field for the investor to come to the country and for for investor a neutral, impartial, fair, you know, commercial arbitration will provide that sense of a, a play level playing field. Now the center is uh, is is established. Uh, I hope, you know, and I'm glad to hear that uh, the the arbitration council will work, will collaborate with the newly established commercial arbitration center, and this way we can skip the learning curve. We do not have to reinvent the wheel. What has worked? What has not worked? how can uh, they all work together to provide once again a complete eco playing field for the industry you know who, who will and who is operating in this country so that they send a message abroad to say Cambodia is a place we should invest Cambodia is a place where if we have industrial dispute we can find a body that can uh, give us a quasi judicial reward uh, when we have commercial dispute there is commercial arbitration center who can give us a sense of justice. So on that note, uh, this is uh, something quite positive for Cambodia to move forward. Good night. <laughs>